welcome <coughs> Guillaume, welcome Karin. I'll Hi. just Hi. introduce you and I will give you the floor just after that. So over the past 10 years, Guillaume activity switched from engineering practices, engineering management and engineering coaching at Thales, and a lot of them centered on the capital model. As for her, Karin is a system engineer working on complex collaborative systems. She has been practicing model-based system engineering in real life on many different projects from more than 10 years now. So welcome you both. Glad you're with us today. And I Thank give you the floor. Thanks. Thanks. Hello, everybody. We are happy to be with uh, in front of you today to share our experience with, uh, with uh, everyone. Okay. Um, okay we are okay for screen sharing okay great uh, hi everybody uh, thanks to be with us to talk about uh, our global engineering processes process based on uh, on MBAC and I uh, will try to show you how it helps us to, to master the, the complexity in uh, our project uh, in Teles. Uh, our presentation will be in four uh, main parts. First, I will uh, introduce uh, our uh, project Archange and uh, its uh, changes. Then, Karen will present uh, our MBSC process uh, from the customer to the development team. Uh, then, I will uh, present uh, tools, topics, uh, th things that we put around uh, this MBSC process to help us to uh, master organizational complexity. And finally, uh, Karen will conclude with uh, some lessons learned and uh, our ranging practices evolution in the past and, uh, and for the future. So let's begin with the, the introduction. What is Archange, our project Archange? Uh, Archange is uh, the new generation of the French Airborne Signal Intelligence System. Uh, the main part of this system is the onboard segment. Uh, we have uh, an aircraft from uh, Dassault, Dassault Aviation, the Falcon 8X. Uh, Ten uh, operators workstation and associated uh, data servers in. And also sensors from Thales uh, for detection, uh, navigation, communication, etc. And the goal of uh, this uh, onboard segment is to uh, detect, record, analyze, and also identify uh, radar and communication signals. Associated to that, we have a uh, ground segment uh, with 10 other uh, operators' uh, workstations uh, connected with uh, the onboard segment through uh, satellite communication. And the goal of this ground segment is to uh, prepare, follow, uh, support, and uh, restitute a mission. And we also have to develop uh, a training center with uh, 10 other operator workstations. Uh, and the goal of this, um, uh, this training center is to, uh, to simulate uh, on ground or uh, on onboard segment to, uh, to train the crew. So first, before uh, talking about our uh, engineering process, uh, let's see uh, what kind of complexity do we have to deal with uh, in, a in a project like, uh, like Archange. First, uh, it's clear that the, the main uh, complexity uh, axis is uh, the technical complexity uh, due to our operational needs and uh, functional uh, constraints. Uh, we have, uh, for Archange, uh, many, many uh, functional needs to, to answer. We have a high sensor sensibility, to, to, uh, which is required. Uh, high level of cyber security, which talks about uh, billions of, uh, of tactical objects to manage, to store, to filter, etc. So clearly, Archange is uh, a complex system. And to address this, uh, this technical complexity, we have to employ different skills on uh, different uh, Thales entities and different geographical sites. And it adds another kind of complexity, which is the organizational one, uh, an organizational complexity due to industrial organization and, uh, and human interactions. Uh, for Archange, uh, we work with uh, Dassault Aviation. Uh, there are two Thales entities, GMS and SIX. 
uh, we work with uh, subcontractors and everybody is in 12 geographic, uh, geographical different places. So to address those complexity, uh, we need to have a structured and tooled up engineering process that optimizes the, the whole team's performance. The problem is that this solution, uh, uh, put a structured tooled up engineering process is also a challenge since we talk here about uh, engineering practices transformation. And uh, when you have a team who have uh, certain habits and you try to uh, introduce uh, new concepts like logical architecture, uh, component, functional chain, capabilities, etc. Uh, when you have to introduce new tools like Capella, Capella Team, Jira, uh, links uh, that you have to uh, between all uh, all tools, uh, you have also to introduce new processes like Arcadia, new co uh, collaborative workflow, etc. And uh, this is really a challenge to uh, transform the engineering uh, practices. And all these ch changes require uh, a mindset changes at the working level and at the manager level. We also have to adapt our uh, organization. We will see it uh, later. And it's uh, really important to, to take time uh, to, uh, to train uh, the team uh, with a specific team, with daily coaching, etc. Uh, to be sure that uh, everybody understands wh what they have to do uh, thanks to this uh, this new practice. So that that, that uh, we better know our project and uh, and uh, associated ch challenges. Uh, let's talk about how we try to master complexity thanks to our global engineering process uh, based on MBSC. The first point is that uh, to master uh, engineering in a, in a complex context, you, it, you, you must to draw the, the global engineering uh, data model and workflow for the whole team. It's important that uh, each member of the team should understand the artifacts he has to produce and how it's connected to, uh, to artifacts produced by, by uh, its colleagues. Uh, when we talk about uh, the global engineering uh, data model, we talk about, uh, of course, uh, the defi definition artifacts with the uh, functional artifacts, logical architecture, physical architecture, non-functional artifacts, and also ergonomics. And we also uh, talk here about uh, test artifacts for the IVV and estimation and uh, planning artifacts also. Uh, drawing this kind of uh, engineering data model is really helpful to, to specify artifacts that uh, you manipulate. And it's also uh, useful to, to specify, for instance, uh, part of Capella meta models you, you don't use. Uh, here, of course, it's a, it's a very simplified version of our uh, engineering data model. And the real one is, uh, is, is a bit more complex, like, uh, like you can see, uh, as you can see on the, on the top right. Uh, in the, this, uh, this real uh, engineering data model, for instance, we define uh, the links between a functional change, uh, functional exchanges, functional requirements, test sheets, how we schedule functional chain in uh, system version, etc. etc. Et so we really have all our engineering artifacts and all links uh, between those, uh, those artifacts. In this presentation, we will focus on uh, two main things. Uh, first, uh, for definition artifacts, we will talk about functional and arch uh, logical architecture, mainly. And then we will talk about uh, estimation and, uh, and planning artifacts. Well, now that we have, uh, that Guillaume have uh, showed to you um, how complex our, our project is and what kind of complexity we have to deal with, um, I'm going to try and focus on now on uh, our engineering process uh, based on uh, MBAC. Um, we decided to uh, adjust uh, our process to, our pro to the project context. Uh, we use Arcadia method and um, we have uh, decided to um, um, 
we have different uh, engineering levels and for each engineering level we have uh, to build different engineering packages um, data packages on the top level uh, we try to answer the question why uh, with the customer what is the customer need and uh, we put because the customer specification data in a data package and we lock it. Uh, you can see a red padlock on the, the, the slide. That means that uh, customer specification data cannot be changed by anyone. Customer cannot change the specifications uh, on his own and you cannot, uh, and the, the engineering team cannot change the customer specification, uh, specification, uh, specification data either on his own. Uh, that's why uh, you can see a padlock because this data must be changed by, by agreement of the two parts, uh, the, the two people. Um, then you have the system engineering level. In that system engineering level, you we are in our process. We have two phases. In the first phase, we will answer uh, the question of what. This is a system analysis phase uh, in Arcadia, and we will ans try to answer what. Um, it does the system to cover the need. What is our system? Uh, what is inside the system and what is outside the system? Uh, what are the, the external actors around the system? What is the system environment uh, composed of? And what is the interface between the different elements around our system and what is inside the system? Uh, in that phase, it does not mean you don't know anything about uh, how your system is built, but you choose not put, to put uh, all this detailed design data in the same data package, in the what we call the SSS uh, data package, in the spe system specification data package. You only formalize data that define what is your system, external interface, and um, it, how the system, what the system uh, does to cover the customer need. In the second phase, when what is the system is clear, uh, now you know what is your system, you can um, deal with how your system is built and to formalize how your system is built in another data package, which we call a specifying design data package, SSDD, uh, SSDD. Uh, where we collect design data and in that phase, in that architecture phase, uh, we system and subsystems in uh, engineering teams work together in order to decide what is a system architecture and how the subsystems are connected together. Uh, what are the interface inside the system between the different subsystems? In that phase, um, what is important uh, is that uh, every members of system engineering team, but also of subsystem engineering teams, agree on the, the definition of what are the subsystems, what are the components of the systems, and what are the interface of um, between the different subsystems. So, in this specifying design data package, we formalize all the in, all the functional, non-functional, and interface definition of different subsystems uh, of the, the whole system. It, is, it needs really strong co-engineering work from uh, system engineering team and subsystem engineering team, and a very strong co-engineering work between architects and functional engineers and non-functional engineers, specialists uh, of any, uh, any subjects. Once everyone agree about the system design definition, the global system design definition, we are able to baseline this um, design data package and we extract uh, subsystem specification data. You can see a red padlock again on the, the um, subsystem specification data package. This means that this data are extracted uh, using tools um, Capella model is extracted, uh, while a subsystem to subsystem transition requirements are uh, that are allocated to components are extracted to, and each subsystem receives uh, a locked data package that corresponds to the system analysis of the subsystem. 
this data package answers the question what what does the subsystem do to cover the need of the system um, it does not mean that uh, the padlock does not mean that the data cannot be changed ever is it means that if data need to be changed they have to be changed in the upper level in the system engineering level so that subsystems agree with system engineer, agree with other subsystem engineers to uh, have consistent data between different subsystems. And then finally, subsystem engineering team uh, start, the start the story again and de define how the subsystem is built to cover the need and decide work on subsystem specifying design data, functional, non-functional, and interface. And once everything is specifying data, design data are done, code implementation can be done. Um, let's focus on each of these different phases. First of all, uh, the system analysis phase. In that phase, uh, we are gonna detail the different uh, phase of this, this data package construction. First of all, we, in that phase, what is really essential is to define what the system is and what the system is not. What is inside the system and what is outside the system. Uh, you, uh, in that phase, there is a lot, a lot of debates uh, within the system engineering team, between uh, system engineers, between system, uh, between managers, uh, with the customer, uh, with the customers sometimes because uh, it, it can um, lead to questions. Uh, you're going to define what are the external actors, what are the external interface, and all is formalized in Capella model. Um, formalizing this system analysis phase in Capella will help you to put the light on the different points you will have to solve. Um, it does not mean you have to solve everything in that phase. You, you cannot solve everything. You cannot decide on every interface. You cannot solve anything in that phase. But formalizing it in Capella helps you being exhaustive, being helps you to put the light on the, the exhaustive list of what what are the the, the technical or organizational uh, uh, problems you will have to deal with. Um, then. In that phase two, uh, we're going to uh, define what are the capabilities of the system uh, and what are the functional chains uh, the system will uh, realize in order to uh, answer the customer need. This, uh, cap this capabilities definition, this capabilities and functional chain list is really fundamental because uh, these choices this capability choice and organization will drive the engineering development and tests from the top system engineering level to the lowest one to the development uh, in engineering uh, level and it will drive the engineering also from the definition phase to the qualification and delivery phase uh, capabilities and functional chains are the guidelines uh, of the whole project uh, engineering uh, once you've decided what are your capabilities and what are your the functional chains, you work on your functional analysis and trace all uh, the functional chains of your system. Um, I remind that in that phase, you don't know yet, you don't need yet to know how your system is built. You try to answer the question, how, what is your system and, and how your system deals with its extern external interface. And only then you write requirements. Uh, functional requirements are totally links, uh, linked to the functional analysis. Uh, and of course, non-functional requirements and different constraints are also uh, written. All these data, um, Capella model data, the ca in um, functional analysis, inter external interface definitions, uh, are the data that compose what we call uh, SSS data package. We don't talk about documents, uh, we talk about engineering data package. Uh, if necessary, documents can be generated using uh, engineering data such as Capella model and um, requirements, textual requirements, uh, but we, we can deal with uh, inner data 
we not necessarily need to generate documents uh, at any time. Well, we have we have worked on um, what is our system, and now we we are going to uh, describe um, how we answer the how uh, question. How is our system built? In that phase, um, the system and subsystem teams uh, collaborate to define the list of the subsystems that compose the system. Uh, this means um, that you're you're going to define how your system is built. Um, it's not only to you know to have a view, um, a synthetic view of your system. Uh, defining the list of the components means that you are going to decide how your system will be developed, how it will be integrated, how it will be delivered. This component, this component list is really important uh, in an architecture point of view, of course, because you're going to define the components, the technologies between in, of the interface and so on. But it's also important for an organization point of view because the components are defined uh, that are defined in that list are the one that will receive a specification data package and that the one that are going to be um, uh, pl planified and uh, developed and delivered. Um, so the component choice, the list of component choice is really important and must be a collaborative uh, choice of the whole system and subsystem engineering team. It's not only an architect's in, in one, uh, you know, a black room that decides of the system architecture. He, he propo uh, architects propose uh, um, system components, but um, the whole team uh, work together uh, in order to decide uh, the list and uh, of the components. In that phase, uh, the capability list and functional challenges does not change because uh, it has been decided. We have worked in system analysis phase on what are the system capabilities and functional chains, and they are they are conserved in that phase so that the they are the continuous guideline through the engineering phase. The functional analysis will be refined in that phase in order to match to cope with. The, the system architecture, the system detail architecture, so functional chains are traced uh, so that they, um, they deal with the system architecture. Um, these activities are cyclic ones. Um, they require a real close co-engineering work of system and subsystem teams so that uh, um, everyone uh, challenges uh, system architecture choices and functional agent analysis cho uh, cho choices too. Uh, and finally, uh, in that phase, we define, we precisely define the interface between the different subsystems. Precisely means that uh, the interface definition um, are, uh, the, the interface definition is the contract, the interface contract between the components, between the subsystems. So it's a, a real, it's real, it's a real specification between the different uh, subsystems. And only then, only once you've done functional analysis and interface definition, only then you are able to formalize uh, all this, all the links together in textual requirements. Um, Once you've uh, once uh, all the system and subsystem teams agree on the specifying date design data, all the data are baselined, and we process a tooled up extraction in order to generate a subsystem specification data package for each subsystem. So each subsystem uh, will uh, receive a locked data package, uh, it, which is composed of uh, an extracted Capella model. Uh, using system to subsystem transition in Capella. Uh, and this, uh, in, and it will also receive allocated requirements. Uh, in the Capella model, in the extracted Capella model, uh, each subsystem will receive a system analysis uh, view that is extracted from the logical architecture view in uh, the system um, uh, engineering, uh, in the system model. Uh, and 
well, the, 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 so each subsystem will receive a view, uh, a system analysis view, and uh, and will be able to construct uh, the diagrams uh, showing how the system, the subsystem, is connected to external actors. So external actors are the other uh, subsystems of the system, or can be to also external actors uh, of the system of the, the global system. Um, in that Capella model 2, it's a Capella extracted model 2, each subsystem will receive the list of capabilities and functional chains uh, that the component is part of um, and th that the component uh, participates in. The extractive, uh, it also receives the definition of, uh, of functional chain, extracted functional chain, where the, the component is uh, uh, acting. And it also receives the extracted uh, subsystem uh, external interface definition, which is extracted from the system engineering level. And you have, we have the detailed uh, interface definition for each subsystem. And it also receives allocated textual requirements, functional and non-functional ones, uh, that it will have to um, satisfy. This contract uh, is a locked contract. It cannot, it can, uh, it can be modified only at system level. Um, uh, it does not mean that uh, people will not uh, be able to change anything. But if a subsystem team needs to change something, needs to change an interface, needs to change uh, a, a, um, a functional requirements, for example, they need to go back to the system engineering level and deal with other subsystems uh, engineers and uh, capability leaders in order to agree what, what the new contract is and to, um, to extract a new contract again, a new, uh, contract, a new specification. What we didn't mention yet is that all these data, uh, all the data we talked about in, uh, in different data packages, all the data are built in an incremental way. We don't wait until we have defined everything, uh, every detailed interface, every detailed architecture uh, topics. We work on in an incremental way, uh, way and we decide the uh, we decide a version. And so this engineering data are produced in an incremental way. Um, on the base of uh, this subsystem specification contract, uh, story begins again. And uh, in subsystem engineering team work on the detailed system subsystem architecture, um, and they decide what are the different components of the subsystem. And they decide of what are the internal interface of the subsystem. For the capability and functional chain list, nothing changed. Nothing changes. The capability and function changes is the same from the top level of the system engineering to the, the lowest level of component definition. But uh, and so they work on internal architecture and they work on the, the components, the subsystem functional analysis so that uh, the refinement of functional chains the, uh, match with the internal subsystem architecture. And of course, um, subsystem te engineering teams work on uh, the interface between the components of the subsystems. And all this, um, the subsystems with soft specifying design data are produced the same way with the same process uh, as uh, the system engineering level data are produced. We work with this in the same way, with the same tools, with the same verifying tools, and so on. We use same, um, the same way to work in system engineering team and subsystem engineering team. Um, as we talk about software, uh, software development, um, we are able to, uh, to generate some data from the subsystem specifying data. Uh, we, were, we are able to generate what we call specification documents. Uh, talking about specification document does not mean we generate paper document, uh, ne uh, if necessary we do, but this means that we generate um, useful data uh, so that developers have the necessary data um, they need to develop. So we have extract um, uh, 
uh, HTML extract from Capella models, um, snapshots uh, from HMI um, sketches. Uh, we have um, links to uh, doors uh, requirement, uh, doors requirements, and so on, so that developers have the a, a comp compilation of data that they are that are useful for them. And uh, as I mentioned before, uh, inter interface definition are detailed. So, uh, and we generate um, uh, component interface and skeletons uh, from directly from um, Capella model. Okay, thank you, Karin. Um, no doubt you, that uh, you better know how our, uh, our engineering process. Uh, we'll, we'll see now uh, what we have put around this process to uh, master uh, organizational uh, complexity uh, in the next slides. So uh, first, uh, first point to, to master organizational complexity, an important thing is, is to, uh, to fight against silos uh, thanks to co-engineering. Uh, when we are in a complex organization uh, like, uh, like Archange, uh, we talk about uh, 100 people, uh, there are natural silos uh, that exist uh, due to industrial organization, due to hierarchical organization, uh, due to uh, different geographical sites, financial work, uh, work package, etc. So you have uh, natural silos that exist. And if silos exist, it means that each one has its uh, own part of truth, but uh, no one has the good, shared, and real truth. Uh, uh, of the, the 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 good global view of the um, of the truth, so it's important to to promote uh, co-engineering and uh, fight against uh, the silo, to try to have only one team that works together, and not uh, several silos that uh, sometimes work uh, one uh, one against the other. So the the solution here is uh, instead of having silos uh, like on the left. Uh, try to have to, to share the same engineering database with all stakeholders and have a global workflow that implies persons from different uh, silos. And that's what we have done on, uh, on Archange. Uh, even if we come from uh, different palace entities, from different uh, geographical sites in different work package, we work together on the same virtual machine, on the same engineering database the same Capella team, the same Jira database, the same DOS database, etc. And we all follow uh, the, same, uh, the same workflow. Um, second point, uh, uh, it's important to find the right balance uh, between the functional needs, mainly between functional needs and a component uh, point of view also non-functional constraint, but uh, the, the two main axes are uh, functional needs and, uh, and component point of view. Uh, now in Thales, everybody uh, talks about uh, engineering thanks to uh, functional chains. Uh, it's uh, the backbone of our uh, engineering process, uh, clearly, but it's not the only thing to consider. Uh, to optimize development and integration phase, uh, it's important to consider an orthogonal axis, uh, which is the component axis. Uh, if you consider only or mainly the functional chain axis, uh, the development phase is not optimized. And in contrary, if you only or mainly consider the component axis, uh, the development phase is optimized, but the functional needs definition and the verification and validation are not optimized. So it's really, really important to, to find the, the right balance, the good trade-off uh, between those two axes. And when we do uh, engineering thanks to functional chains, we, 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 we may sometimes uh, forget uh, another axis, which is also important, which is the non-functional needs and constraints. And we have to uh, to exploit uh, also this uh, this data. So for, for that to to find the right balance between those two main axes, functional and component, clearly Capella is uh, really helpful since uh, those two two axes are uh, in the in the meta model. 
And to ensure this right balance uh, between uh, those two axes, we have adapted our uh, organization breakdown structure uh, and we have a leader for each point of view or uh, several leaders in uh, each point of view. Uh, we have first for each capability, a capability leader, which is a responsible of a set of functional chains from the definition to the verification and validation. On the other axis, we have component leaders uh, who are responsible of uh, the development team of the component. And each component leader is in, in interaction with one or more uh, capability leaders. It depends on how its component uh, is involved in uh, each of the capability and functional chains. And on the top left, we also have architects who are responsible of non-functional constraints that uh, influence uh, functional needs and or uh, co component development. And we also have a design authority who are able to have a global viewpoint of, uh, of the project. We are this trade-off uh, between functional and components is really key is for the system delivery schedule. How do we build uh, a, a planning that optimizes the, the two axes? First, uh, the, IV, the system IV manager defines the global system version strategy with different milestones, V1, V2, V3, with, uh, with dates, and uh, a goal for, for each version. Thanks to that, uh, all capability leaders are able to schedule their functional chains or part of functional chains in each system version to answer this need, uh, uh, which comes from uh, the IVV manager. Architects do the same. They schedule non-functional topics in each system uh, version to answer the, the system version uh, goal. And for that, we use in Jira a specific uh, type of uh, EPIC, uh, which is called uh, System EPIC. And a System EPIC is a part of functional chain or a non-functional non topic that we want to specify, develop, integrate, verify, and uh, validate in a system version. And uh, it stands for the system needs for, uh, for the planning, for the schedule. In front of that, we have component leaders that, who uh, uh, define their component milestones to answer uh, system, uh, system version milestones. And then each component leaders try to answer uh, the system needs, expressed thanks to the system epic. Uh, they try to, to answer the, this need. And what is important is that they have to take into account their own development constraints. For instance, for a component, it may be easier to develop uh, two functional chains in the same time because uh, it's implemented by the, the same piece of code, even if the system wants uh, each uh, functional chain in different version. It may be easier for a component to, uh, to, to develop a non-functional topics before a functional chain, even, even if the system need is to develop the functional chain before. So here, really, the, the, the game is to find the good, uh, good trade-off uh, between uh, the respect of the system needs and the respect of the component development efficiency. So for the, this part of development, we, we use another kind of uh, EPIC uh, that we call a component EPIC. A system EPIC uh, can depend on several component epics. For instance, uh, for a part of functional chain to be developed, we may uh, need to uh, have uh, different development in different uh, different components. So we have different uh, component epic. And on the opposite, a component epic can answer several system epic. The same piece of code uh, developed, for instance, for a several uh, you know, functional change implementation in a, in a component. And finally, uh, so, so the, what we have to do here uh, again is to uh, to find the, the, the good trade-off between uh, the system need and uh, 
the respect of the, the component development efficiency. And finally, if we talk about software uh, components, uh, of course, we can split uh, component epic into um, into uh, agile stories to, to be scheduled in a, in an in a agile sprint. Sorry. A last point about uh, organizational complexity. Uh, it's really important to uh, to clarify engineering tasks and associated workflow. If you don't, in a huge uh, team like uh, like Archange, um, if you don't, you you should be in the following situation with a team uh, which works uh, very hard, which is certain to uh, certain that a schedule will be fulfilled. And when milestone is approaching, you discover a new important tax, tasks to uh, to reach the goal, etc. So to avoid this kind of situation, uh, it's uh, quite a, a simple solution. You only have to define for uh, each system epic, for instance, you have to define different steps of your engineering process, of your engineering workflow. For instance, here uh, we have uh, different uh, uh, steps for uh, part, uh, a part of functional chain definition. We have to do the functional anal analysis, to uh, write uh, textual requirements, to define uh, this or this uh, interface, etc. And when you have all those steps, you can, thanks to, uh, to a tool like uh, Jira, uh, build this kind of view where you have all your activities and thanks to uh, four uh, columns you know if the the activity is uh, uh, begun or not if it's in progress who is working on if the the activity has to to be to be validated and if the activity is uh, is closed so uh, thanks to that uh, the team and uh, and manager uh, know uh, where they are uh, what we have to do, uh, what is done, etc. And when we have uh, this kind of uh, activities uh, formalized, it's uh, really easy to 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 build uh, this kind of um, of KPI uh, to know uh, week after week where 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 we are in terms of uh, of activities. Let's conclude. Um... What are what kind of lesson uh, we have learned? Uh, what do we, we want you to remember after this uh, call? Uh, first of all, uh, capabilities and components are the two fundamental dimensions um, that structure uh, the engineering workflow, and you must take care of both. Uh, and your organization, your project organization, must reflect this. It's important to decide um, uh, who who is capability leader and who uh, are the the component leader too. Uh, second point uh, is that Capella model uh, shall be uh, the reference backbone of the engineering data. Uh, this means that to be useful, Capella model should be used every day by each member of the the engineering team, and not only by Capella specialists. It's really important to help people um, connect to the Capella model, use Capella data, uh, work, produce Capella data, and so on. Uh, everyone uh, sh shall use the Capella model. Um, a second point is that Capella um, shall be connected to other engineering or management data, such as requirements or epics, for example. Um, in a lean way of engineering life. This means that you have to use uh, adapted tools in order to improve uh, engineering efficiency. Um, data unicity and data consistency shall be an, accept, an obsession. Uh, what is important is that your engineering data are consistent. Tool unicity uh, should not be an, an obsession. Um, Capella is a great tool and it can be used uh, connected to other gr other great tools, uh, so uh, work on your um, engineering data model so so that Capella has the right place in your engineering data model. Um, well, um, this uh, is part of the two keys to success. First, um, the early definition of your global engineering data model so that 
um, you define uh, precisely what are the data uh, that will be used, uh, how the data, the engineering data, such as functions, functional chains, uh, test sheets, uh, and so on, uh, what are the data that you manipulate, what are the different artifacts that you will manipulate uh, during your project, the project life, um, and how the, dat the data, uh, uh, what are the data that have to be produced, and you also have to do an early definition of your engineering process. This means uh, you define what are the roles in the, of the team members in the engineering team and how uh, do they produce and validate engineering data. Uh, when, or, uh, as you do so, um, this provides uh, the engineering team with a framework they can rely on uh, so that each engineering member um, uh, knows what he has to do and how he, what data he has to produce and how he has to produce the data and how he validates the data he produces. So he works. He only works on his engineering job, which is designing, specifying um, the solution for the solution for the customer. Um, as the, the the engineering data model is fixed and the engineering process is done. Everything is clear for every team member, and they can they are free to run their engineering job. And finally, uh, it's important not to underestimate uh, the engineering transformation challenges because teams will need training and coaching. Um, managers uh, shall be sponsors of this changing, and all these efforts uh, uh, are the results. Um, success is at the end of the road. Um, and let's focus now uh, all the all we we've done uh, in, on this uh, engineering route. <laughs> um, we started. Okay, Karin, just for for info, we have just three minutes left. Okay. I'm sorry. Uh, including, including questions. <laughs> Um, we've, we've went through uh, from document centric uh, engineering uh, through we introduced uh, capability and uh, component uh, uh, matters. And then on ATL2, uh, Maritime Petrol uh, Aircraft Renovation Project, uh, we introduced model centric uh, engineering uh, with the model validation um, concerns. Today in Archange, we added a uh, requirement validation and tooled up on uh, management uh, connected to engineering data. And what we dream of for tomorrow is have uh, a whole uh, integrated engineering, engineering environment that can help us uh, work, focus on engineering work uh, and have uh, the right tools to help us uh, um, work on our digitized engineering data and uh, what we dream of uh, is being able to apply CI CD principles uh, that are successful uh, in software development uh, to be able to apply these principles to system engineering. Okay. <laughs> okay, thanks for this presentation. Um, well, we have just maybe something like two minutes left and a dozen of questions. So obviously we won't be able to answer all of them. Um, I will just pick uh, a couple of them. And, and as a reminder for the attendee, you can upvote for the most relevant one. So if you want one of them be asked, uh, please vote. Okay, first question so far. Uh, this, this type of methods and tools are not new in Thales. Uh, they have been around since 19. Uh, the question is why it takes so long to be accepted by the engineers? Okay. Um, I don't know if you have um, the right answer to this question. Um, changing habits needs time, uh, is the first point. And uh, I think that uh, it's, it's not so easy to define the right engineering process uh, every um, um, speciality, speciality engineer um, will um, accept and work, on, work with. Uh, so uh, we have to try, fail, and, try, and succeed uh, at the end. So um, 
it, this works anyway. Um, this works, um, but it needs time. Changing habits needs time. Um, so. Okay, thanks for that. And maybe, probably the last question, unfortunately. Um, slide 15, you mentioned links to requirements indoors.